In this video, I'm going to show you how to retopologize inside of Maya a high poly object. Again, this is the object that we made in Agisoft. Again, you could do this for multiple pieces of software, where it's ZBrush or Mudbox or any other photo scan software. And if you want to use Maya to retopologize and UV your object, this is one method uh, of doing it. So let's get that object loaded into Maya. So file, import, and I'm going to select that object. And then in the options for that import, I'm going to go to namespace to make sure that name, use namespaces is turned off. It's going to take a, a second or two or a minute for it to load because, again, this is a big object. Our object has now been loaded into our scene. And you can notice that the object is has a huge offset from the origin this is really important to maintain do not remove your object to the origin because this is where the object lives in the other pieces of software so you just have to retopologize it and you and UV it from this spot and it makes it a little bit more challenging uh, but when you want to bring it back into Agisoft and reproject your textures onto new UVs, this maintaining this offset is really important, or even inside a ZBrush, depending on what you're doing. So we got to maintain this position. All right, and it's not that big of a deal for an object like this. The other thing is, when remember we reoriented our object in Agisoft, and that's the reason why it comes in at the forward-facing Z because we did that orientation in Agisoft. Uh, most of the time, objects in Agisoft are just all wonky and all in different directions. So that's why we spend that extra time to make sure the position is somewhat something that we're comfortable to work with. All right, now here's the other thing. This object, if I select it, and then I go to display, heads up display, and I go to, where is it, poly count and move it around you can see there's three million faces now my computer can handle it but again I might have other objects with more polygons uh, you might be on a machine that just can't handle that many polys so what we're gonna do is we're going to make a lumbelic cache so we're gonna make a geocache of this object and offset it to your uh, computer's GPU which is gonna run this object so much faster it's not going to run with cpu and ram all that and all that it's going to run so much faster if we built that geocache and the way we do that is select the object go up to cache lumbatic cache and then we're going to say export selection to lumbatic options box we're just going to do it on the current frame again this geocache we can export animation along a timeline but we're not doing that uh, for this option we're going to keep it pretty generic so current settings current frame should work just fine scroll through I think everything looks good so we're going to export that selection and then make sure you put it in the right directory and then I'm just going to call it scan box uh, cache I'm going to call it demo. And I'm going to export that selection. And again, that takes a, another second or two. And then I'm going to actually delete my original scan high res polygon object from the outliner. And then I'm going to go back to cache. I'm going to go to Limbeck cache again. And I'm going to say open Limbeck cache. And I'm going to open this up, go back to the directory, and there it is. So it's going to be this .abc file that we want. So we're going to select it, import it, and it, again, it, it's going to take a second or two for it to load. And there it is. And you'll notice that when you move around, 
the scene is going to be a little bit snappier. It's offsetting all that geometry onto the GPU, your video card. Okay, the next step in this process is to make the object live so we can actually start building our new mesh on top of this, our low poly mesh. So we're going to select it, come up to the top, and then turn and see this little magnet icon, make the selected object live. I'm going to click it so that object is now live. And we're going to go to the modeling toolkit, and we're going to go and use the quad draw. Click that on, and when you are outside the model, it gives you this do not enter sign. And if you, as soon as you hover over it, you get a crosshair. This allows you to drop points onto this live mesh. So I'm going to start in this corner right up in here. I'm going to click it once. Then I'm going to go to the other side, click it again. I'm going to click again down here in the bottom. And once again down here. Okay, once I've clicked down four points to make a polygon, I'm going to hold shift hover over in the middle of those four points and then left mouse click boom so I just built my first polygon I'm gonna come to about a 45 degree angle I'm gonna go down and drop another two points in each corner here and then hold shift somewhere in the middle of the edge and those two points that I drew down so holding shift and then clicking again and now I have just built that corner I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing I'm gonna drop this point and this point and then hold shift and that edge and those two points made that new polygon I'm gonna go and I can select an edge by just hovering over it click on it and is it gonna oh there it goes and it allows me to move that edge into the corner. You can even go to the vertice itself and move each vertice by itself just by hovering over that vertice and left mouse clicking. So I'm just kind of fine tuning the position. And then you've got this edge over here. I'm going to come over here, wind these up a little bit better. there we go and now you can try to come over here and along this edge and this edge and snap them together so I can come over here and try to hold shift and it's not going to give it to me it's not going to work so there's a couple ways of doing this you could draw two points out here and then build a polygon along this edge and those two points or you can extend an edge so either either method will work it's kinda up to you on how you want to do this so let's do the extend edge method so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the modeling toolkit and underneath quad draw options right now we've got extend right now it wants to do it along a loop so it can do a loop of polygons and extend it and a bunch of new faces I don't want that. I want to use edge. So I'm going to go to this little drop down triangle and select edge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the tab key, tab key, and hover over that edge that I want to extend. So holding the tab key and then clicking on that edge and then dragging it out all the way to the other side. And there it is. I just extended that edge out. Then I'm going to grab one vertice of that edge and then move it to the other one and it will snap for me. And then I'll move it and it will snap for me. And then here's the thing. There's the, under the quad draw options, there's so 10 units or in Maya, it will try to do a auto weld. And that's what's happening with those vertices. And then I can do the same thing to the bottom. So I'm going to hit the tab key and select that edge and then drag it out. And there I drag that edge out. And then I'm going to grab this vertice and snap it there. 
And then these are really close to each other. I'm going to take that and snap it there. Pretty easy. Let's do the same thing to the top. I'm going to get a good angle. Hit the tab key and then extend it to the other side the best I can. And then I'm just going to have to select an edge. I'm just going to select that. Eh, nope, there, there it goes. Oh, I did the whole thing. Perfect. So you just come over here and make sure you snap it edge to edge or vertex to vertex and you should be good to go. And now I'm just going to kind of make sure all those points are all lined up. All right, so in the next video, we're going to add some more detail to this model.